Hey, I'm Chase and welcome to How To Week here on New Age Creators. I enjoy putting stop motion in my videos because I really love the handmade feel it gives. But sometimes with deadlines that's not always possible and you need a faster way to be able to make sort of handmade animations. So, feeling super crafty? Grab a cup of tea, enjoy Craftanoon, and I'm going to show you how to make this. So we're going to start everything off in Photoshop. I have some paper assets which are literally just photos of some paper I took with my phone and then sent to my computer. So we're going to start with one of those. If you can, try to get colored card because it shows up the contrast of the paper a little bit better. And we're going to use a simple hue adjustment to make that the background color we want. So to just play with these, you can make it any color you like, really, um, but it tends to work better when you don't change the hue too much from the original color. I think we're going to use that there. And then you want to grab the pen tool that we're going to use to draw the path for our text. So just sort of stretch, ooh, I'm terrible at pen tools, it out sort of in a curve like that, and we're just going to start our text from the middle, like that. Now from that we're just going to grab our original layer again and change the paper color to be some sort of white paper. So we'll drop the saturation right down, put the lightness up. Now once we have that done we're going to select all the pixels along that text line. So we're going to right click, select pixels. Now on our white paper layer, we're gonna make a new mask. So layer, layer mask, reveal all. And then we're gonna go Command Shift I to invert the selection, and then Command I to make it all disappear. And once we've got that, we should have our white paper crafted in. Now that looks well and good, but it doesn't really look like you've cut it out by hand. So to fix that, we're gonna go Filter, Distort, Ripple. Maybe something like that. Large set to 25%. Because we've still got some edges there, we're just going to select what we want and then Command Shift I and then delete the rest. And we have our basic paper. Now that doesn't really stand out. I usually duplicate that and then drop it below the other one and make it a little bit darker. So once we've got those, we're just going to pop them in a group and line them up where we want them. So once we've got that main part, we're going to add any other decorations. I think Craftanoon would look good with some stars. So we're going to open up Adobe Illustrator as well. I could draw them by hand, but no one really wants to see me try to draw. So I'm just going to use the one that is already there and modify it slightly so it's not quite as perfect. And then I'm going to copy that one over into Photoshop. I like to do that a little bit in Illustrator because I find Photoshop's pen tool really hard to use. Once we have all those how we want them, we're going to go through and add a little bit of a drop shadow and this really sells the effect. And we don't want to make it too obvious, so just a low opacity, low distance, low spread, low size. And then we can just copy that effect, so copy layer style, and then paste it onto our other layers. You can either do it on all layers or just on like the background layers. Sometimes I find, like for the star, it kind of helps to do it on both. And then we're just going to group those so we can manage them as well. We're just going to save that before we bring it over into After Effects. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit because Photoshop and After Effects don't always communicate perfectly. So we're just going to make masks around the items. Now, once we have that all set up and ready to go, we are going to basically start animating it. So I like to get rid of everything I'm not using at the time. And I'm going to bring our background in first, so we're going to set a keyframe at one second where it should be for the position, and then we're going to move it up and off, we'll have it come down for this, and then we're going to have our Craftanoon text appear. Now for this I'm going to duplicate it once for each letter, so C-R-A-F-T-E-R-N-O-O-N. And I'm going to isolate each letter just with its own little mask. We're just going to offset them by a couple of frames each. Fantastic. So comes down 
craft noon spells itself out. Now once those are in place, we're gonna animate our stars coming in. So we're gonna have this one jump up from the bottom, I think. Now once you have all that animation playing through how you want it, we're gonna add sort of the bits that sell the effect. So what we're gonna do in our transform controls for the letters is that we're going to alt click on position and we're gonna use an expression. I have very minimal understanding of how expressions work at this stage. But I know you type wiggle, open bracket, then how many times a second you want it to wiggle. So we're gonna go three, comma, and then how many pixels you want it to move. So we're gonna go four in this stage and hope for the best. And our C is moving around, yeah, a good amount. And then we can also go into the rotation and do the same thing, except we want it to be less drastic. So we're gonna go wiggle three, and then maybe we're only gonna have it go two degrees, cause otherwise it's quite a lot. Oh, so that's way too much. So we're gonna go wiggle once, and maybe one degree. That's a bit better. So we can actually just copy that transform tool, and then apply it to all of our other Craftanoon letters. But you do have to do it manually for the stars because we've changed their position in animating them. And now we should have all of our pieces moving around a bit. We're gonna make sure that it's not quite so fluid. So we're gonna go back into our overall composition. And in the effects, we're gonna apply one called Posterize Time. And we're gonna set that to, let's try seven frames a second. And from this point, it's just tweaking it until it matches your taste. I think my things are moving around a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go back in and change the wiggle properties. And once you're done with that, you can either export it or just drag and drop it right back into Premiere and you're done. Anyway, if you found this tutorial useful, let me know. If you make anything with it, tweet it at me at Everything on Twitter, and I will catch you guys later.